Welcome to the Glenn Beck Program. Tonight, we're going to talk about the education system in this country. I have an audience full of uh, college-age Americans who are chomping at the bit to have their voice heard and to have their chance up to bat. But first, we have, it says eight, but I don't think I erased this yesterday, and I don't have an eraser here. We actually only have seven shows left, six after tonight's uh, program. Um, and I have so much to cover. I want to tell you that, I, I want to show you something. Come on over here. I want to show you something that we're going to cover um, next week that everyone said that I was crazy for. Remember, this is back in uh, January. They'll never put a caliphate together. Next week, I'm going to show you this. This is about the caliphate. This is a uh, book printed here in the United States about how we can put a caliphate together. And I love this. Halt this conspiracy of high treason. The goals here of uh, this, which is the same group that you're going to see here in a minute, is um, to uh, dismantle the Jewish state completely, uprooting it so J no Jew remains or is ever allowed in Jerusalem. But remember, I'm the crazy one. Um, I want to show you this. We found this today. This is from a conference that is coming up in the next couple of weeks in Great Britain. Same group that did one here in America. Remember the word, uh, what is it, Khalifa or Caliph? Uh, is Caliphate. caliphate. Um, that means one global Islamic government that will look over the entire world. Watch what they're pushing for now in Great Britain. Our vision for change. If there's one thing that America and the whole world needs to understand, there is a competing force and vision for change. In the Middle East and in our own country and all around the world, there is a vision of a caliphate. It is not nuts to prepare and to monitor and be warned. Because as um, we will show you next week, there are forces, just as we told you, radicals, Islamists, communists, and socialists have gathered together to destroy the West and destroy Israel. Um, we're putting some things together that will prove that absolutely without a shadow of, your without a shadow of doubt for next week's program. I want to show you this one piece we just got from Louis Farrakhan in a speech. I want you to hear and get this through your neighbor's head. There is a competing vision for how things are run. The world is now up for grabs because America is weak. If Israel falls, ask yourself this question. Will it embolden the Islamic world and all that have stood against America and the idea that man could rule himself? Or will they say, oh, no big deal? There are more people on this planet now that believe America's days are over that believe America's days and brightest days are ahead. Listen to the warning of Louis Farrakhan. All of this fictitious dream of a few that rule the many, that they will continue their rule, their time is up. I'll say it again loud and clear. Your time to rule is up and your rule will end in war. More next week. A lot to do tonight. Let's go. Well, hello America. Welcome to the program. 
We have a, a lot to talk about tonight. Last night we talked about uh, we talked about energy, um, and there's a lot to talk about with energy. Uh, we talked about the administration's hostile policy towards our most important energy sources. Our economy is about to crumble, and they are making it in Washington harder to gain access to energy that we have. They're closing down our coal plants because of regulation. We get, by the way, 50% of our electricity from coal. They have made oil permits very difficult to get. And we are in the midst of an energy crisis. A lot of this is self-imposed. We have a ton of untapped energy resources that we could use to help. But for some reason, we refuse to be independent. Tonight, I want to talk to you about another untapped resource, the great minds, great minds and the people of this country who have first retired. All of that knowledge, all of that skill, all of that experience, wasting away to what? So you can hit a little white ball around the field, sit on a beach, what are you, I mean, what are you doing? I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but what else is new? The boat called America is sinking and we're a little short on life rafts. Could you help? Could you get into the game? And I don't mean necessarily go back to work. I mean, could you help others? Could you mentor someone? I don't want to talk about the untapped resource tonight of the retired. Um, I want to talk about somebody else that wants to get into the game. The other side of the retirees, the youth, the 25 and under crowd. Something a lot of people that uh, in America won't be willing to admit, but I will, those of us who are in our 40s, 50s, and above, in many ways we failed our kids, um, mainly because we didn't know. We just didn't see it coming. As parents, we had this bizarre ex ex expectant that, uh, expectance that somehow or another everybody will just, our kids will just feel the way we do. They'll learn all of this stuff through some sort of osmosis. And America will just always be here. So we gave our kids a gentle shove out into the world, sending them to the wolves without a clue. We let the school, we let television, Sesame Street, society, anyone but us raise our kids because we wanted to have it all. It was a lie and we bought it. Now our kids don't have the same understanding that we do. And they're entering a very different world unprepared because everybody got a stupid trophy. Now, we bought into the lie that a college education is the only chance for success. And if you're without it, you're screwed. Before the elites have a cow, I do believe that there are many things that you have to do that require extensive studies. Um, this morning we were talking about this new jet. I don't know if anybody saw it, but there's this new jet that um, they're now saying can fly at incredible speeds, or they're working on it. It's, I don't know, about 30 years away or so. Um, and we were talking about at what speed does steel break down? At what point does metal break down? Do we have a new alloy that can withstand those extreme conditions? Well, you have to have a college education to be able to even answer that question. The people pushing the limits are not, you know, just didn't find themselves on the street at a McDonald's and all of a sudden they're like, ah, I like birds and big shiny things in the sky, I'll make something fly fast. You, you do need a little higher understanding. But at the same time, we endorse an educational system now that is increasingly only about memorization, dates. It's not about critical thinking, it's about passing a test. A system that ushers high school seniors into college while only 12% demonstrate a solid grasp on their nation's history. And then we just repeat the process at college. Only this time, everybody who can graduate and just recite dates, now they owe hundreds of thousands of dollars. And it's only getting worse. The cost of a college education is rapidly rising, far more than the cost of inflation, more than even the cost of health care. But I don't hear a peep about it in the media. When I adopted my son, uh, Rafe, he's six years old now. My wife and I, we got together with a financial advisor and we tried to be responsible. And we said, okay, so how much do we have to put away every month to save up for college for him? And we thought we were way ahead of the curve. We we're like, hey, you know, he's just been born, huh? The financial advisor said, well, at the cost of an education, the way it's increasing now, you should put away the full amount now and you may have to add more when he's ready to go to college. You gotta be kidding me. Except you don't hear a word about that. 
Something else people don't ever say is, does everybody need a $50,000 education? Do you need to go to Harvard, Yale, Columbia? Is that really? I mean, what's wrong with learning a trade? What's wrong with um, uh, an education that isn't Ivy League? <laughs> what's wrong with an apprenticeship? Is that not the best way to learn, to actually watch people do the thing that you want to do? Watch them, learn from them day in and day out. This administration has now made it tougher for even interns to find an internship. This is not only hurting the companies of our country, it is hurting the youth of America because they are losing invaluable experience. Almost everything I learned worth value, I learned at someone's side watching them. If you've ever seen the show Deadliest Catch, it's some of the hardest working people you'll ever see. These are sea fishermen. One of the captains who recently passed away, Phil, once talked about how he got into the business. And he got his start by going down to the docks as a teenager and begging to get work. He, he actually did it and it worked. He had this crazy idea that he would work for free just to learn because he knew the experience would pay off. But we don't teach that anymore. The system is broken. Tonight, we're gonna to talk to the untapped resource. Find out how they feel, because that's what we're supposed to do. Let's listen, let's find out how everybody feels. No, let's really not. We'll find out how they feel, and then let's see if anybody has a plan. See if anybody has an idea. See if anybody's doing anything about it. See if anybody has any ideas also we're going to show you um, an 11 year old tonight, somebody who is actually going, well, I can make a difference. He's 11. So if you're 40, you might ask yourself, what the heck is wrong with me if the 11 year old thinks he can make a difference? Why aren't you? Let's talk to the untapped resource of America. Okay. Who, uh, who has massive debt? Okay. Who believes that massive debt is really going to pay off? Come on, somebody. Nobody? Not a soul. Tom. Well, for me, I think it'll pay off. It's an investment. Uh, I'm paying now for the education, which will help me earn that money back at some point down the road. Or at least I'm hoping that it will be earned back at some point. Who went to, uh, who went to college uh, to, to find your way? I'm going to figure out what I want to do. Okay. Allison, in the third row, you did that? I did. <laughs> yeah. Did it work out for you? Um, yes. Yeah. Except I ended up choosing a profession that's kind of hard to make money. I am a theater major. And oh. That's yeah. a lot of money in that. <laughs> yeah. That's good. I mean, I love what I do. That's but good. But it's just, it's going to be one of those things that's hard to find work to mm -hmm. pay off those debts and sure. to ensure security later on. May I ask you, Allison, yes. you're, you graduated from college? Yes. Okay. Um, if I said to you, hey, Allison, I want to sell you a house today for $100,000, what would you say? I can't afford it. Okay. <laughs> you can't afford it. I can give you loans. Don't worry about it. And you can pay very small amounts. Don't worry. We'll make it affordable for you. It's I just want to sell you this house. Get into this house. You gotta have a house. If you don't have a house, where are you gonna live? You gotta have a house. Everybody has to have it's a house. It's true, it's true. You want a house, yes. So you're gonna have a house and I'm gonna pay for I'm gonna mm -hmm. help you pay for it. You just have to pay very small. Okay. I'm would skeptical. you you're skeptical, sure. Yeah. But would you not also say maybe, okay, well if I have to have a house, uh -huh. what would you ask? Payment? I'd ask payment, what's the interest? What's okay. the, like how about where is it? Yes. How yeah, about where is it? What, how many bedrooms? Kitchen. Does it even have a kitchen? Yeah. yeah. Nobody would go out. I've never ever gone out and spent a hundred thousand dollars on anything that I hadn't known exactly what I wanted and what I wanted it for. I mean, nobody goes out and says, you know what? Well, I'm going to go out and buy a house and then just pick a house in some random city in some random country with God knows how many bedrooms or even a kitchen. Does anybody think that that's what's happening to our society with education when you spend a hundred thousand dollars or more? Brian? To a degree I think it is. I, I talk to people my age all the time who 
they ask me what I'm into, I say radio, TV, I'm doing radio shows at Monmouth University and, you know, I'm getting heavily involved and I'll ask them, you know, what, what are you studying in college? What are you doing extracurricular? And they say, oh, I'm not really sure what I want to do. And these are seniors in college. You know, I, I'm not sure what I want to do, but I know I need to go to college. So I'm thinking you're spending thousands of dollars and you don't even know what you want to do and your time's almost up in college. Anybody know anybody who is going to graduate school just to place hold? Raj? Actually, down here in front? Yeah, I know a lot of people that are going to grad school for the simple fact of, well, I don't have anything else to do. Might as well kill time and hope the economy is better when I graduate grad school. I know a lot of people are doing that. What happens when, you get, what happens when they get to the end and they're now more in debt? I mean, that's an expensive placeholder. You, yeah. could get, you could go to the library every day and probably rent a sweet house on a beach and end up with less debt and more knowledge at the end of your, your years in graduate school and be in better condition. Yes? I think most students go to college for the purpose of getting a job after college. and. A lot of kids don't know what they're doing when they go to college, and a lot of people do figure out what, they're, what they want to do in life after, when they're in college. But, you know, I don't think kids are so motivated to do, or they don't even realize what they can do with themselves because they're so set in line with a system that tells them they have to get a job, and the only way they can get a job is through college. And do you, who believes that? Who believes that the only way you can get a job? Sally, you believe that? The only way you can get a job is through college? Absolutely. I think, um, unfortunately, it's playing within the rules for now and trying to stay. I mean, I could, I could tell you I, I'm an example of someone who has definitely, like, I mean, education has become so institutionalized in a way that um, it's definitely failed me beyond belief. I mean, my GPA does not say anything about who I am. I mean, I, I found an organization called the Youth International Empowerment. We went to Egypt this past December. We rallied a young youth in Tahrir Square, we marched with the people, and that doesn't say anything about my GPA. It didn't overlook that at all. So, so, so what does that tell you? Um, this is my 12th time changing my major, actually, and I'm a senior in college. <laughs> and I don't even think I'm going to be able to graduate on time, which means I'm going to be spending another year paying for college. If you, don't believe you, if you don't believe you can make it in America without a college education, you're wrong. I have. And I know many very successful people. You know what you need? Any, who's seen the Green Lantern? By the way, don't recommend it. It's horrible. <laughs> Has anybody seen it? Anybody seen it? Oh, you guys are so much smarter. That's why you need a college education. <laughs> I went. Um, and, and I saw it. You know, what the, you know what the power of the Green Lantern light is? The power is imagination with will. It's the best superhero out there. Imagination and will. If you imagine it and you will it, if you don't give up, you'll do it. Especially if there's more than one. Especially if there's more than one of you. Just do it. You have to be smart. Uh, Jonathan. I don't want to say this as if it's something so easy, but the truth is our nation was founded on the principle of entrepreneurship and we can do anything by ourselves. We don't need somebody to employ us. We can, cr we can come up with an idea. We can be innovators. We can invent. What do you think people are doing around the world, waiting for people to offer them jobs? We have to go out and think and imagine, like you said, and come up with our own ideas and be leaders in this world again. I have to tell you guys. You, you have, would you say, who thinks that you, your generation has less opportunity than my generation did? Less opportunity? Good for you that didn't raise your hand. I think you have more opportunity because you have access. I remember the fax machine. <laughs> I remember, I remember honestly, do you know the guys who started FedEx, do you know that they couldn't get a loan? Do you know why they couldn't get a loan? No bank would give them a loan to start their company. Do you know why? Underage? Underage? No. Quote from every bank, like eight banks, nobody needs anything overnight. <laughs> okay? The world has completely changed. You have instant access and can network with people all around the world. That's unique. It provides you with a unique opportunity if you choose it. Back in a second.
So Raj and I were just talking. This is a this is a um, a group of uh, everybody under 25. Generally, everybody under 25. Um, a group of 25 year olds. Um, Eileen, who works on our uh, stage um, uh, stage here at Fox, she said, you know, what you should do is you should talk about the opportunities because so many people feel like they don't have an opportunity and they're under 25. So we are. Um, and Raj and I were talking about this during the commercial break. And you brought up the point that. Well, I mean, I think what you're talking about memorization is exactly on. I mean, I learned a lot in college, but only 15% of it were in classes. We don't, we're not taught what a mortgage is. We have no idea how to balance a checkbook. We have no idea how to use a credit card. I mean, some people just learn it from their parents, but there's, there's, there's no one teaching you this stuff. However, we could probably recite the entire periodic table at the end of, you know, honors chemistry, but practical yeah, and stuff. And that goes away quickly. Exactly. Practical stuff, you know, that you need. Where is that, you know? Can I ask you guys a question? Who are you waiting for? Nobody. Who said that? Why do you say that? One thing that I learned at college was that there actually are plenty of opportunities in the world. I lived in a great house with a lot of really great people who knew a lot about a lot of different things. And I saw so many opportunities. I started a website company with my partner here, Jared Ringel. And first thing Are I you two evil capitalists? <laughs> no, well, that's actually... No. We're trying to help the world, actually. Yeah, right. that's the premise of our company, FirstDynamicWebsites.com, is to provide websites to small business owners for affordable costs because the market right now is so saturated with people who take advantage of small businesses all across the nation. And so we're looking to help these people because... I have news for you. Don't ever, ever, if anybody ever asks you if you're a capitalist again, yes! <laughs> yes, I am! You know what system has saved more lives and cured more people of illness and provided more people with warmth and food than anything else on the planet? Capitalism. Now, capitalism can be evil or it can be good. Just like the internet, you can get porn or scriptures. It's up to you. <laughs> Don't shy away from being a capitalist. You're doing it the right way. Good for you. Now, you both went to college? Same school, Rutgers University. Right. You went to Rutgers. And um, is this what you planned on doing when you... No, this is not what we planned on doing at all. Actually, the idea came together when we had a meeting. It was myself, Mark, and our other partner, Mike. And we were just sort of spitfire throwing ideas together about things that could make money. And this was something that we found as a point of pain for small businesses today. And we feel that between the three areas that we've studied and had internships and experiences in, we'd be able to combine that together to create and develop the business that could actually help people. So here's the question again that I ask. And Mark, was the only one that answered it. Who are you waiting for? Nobody. Nobody. Why are you waiting for anybody? Do you believe, who here believes man can rule himself? Oh, well, as soon as we finish teaching you how to balance a checkbook, as soon as we figure out try, trying to feed you a job, create one. You guys have everything going for you. You have it up here. You're the most free in the world as of 525. <laughs> Do it. Take charge of your own life. Yes. Uh, Jesse, first. Go isn't ahead. It, isn't it too much to ask for the universities to give us everything that's exactly um, pertinent to what we're going to do in the future? Because the universities really can't predict what they're going to, what we're going to need in the future. They're just going to make us aware of things that maybe weren't before. And isn't there a, a cost to self-education? Well, I, I, I don't know. I don't think I understand your question. Yeah. I, I mean. I mean, Should they be studying by yourself in the library? Can you really get as good of an education as you can, let's say, at a at a good university somewhere? Yes. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. you. I, I, I think if you have mentors, I think you can. I, I will tell you. I took one semester at Yale, and um, my uh, my professor um, uh, said to me. He said, "What are you? Why are you here?" I was thirty. I was paying for it for myself, and I just wanted answers. And he said, "Why are you here?" Because I was really disruptive in the class. <laughs> um, and um, I said, because I'm searching for some answers. And he said, what are you reading? And I told him, I said, I'm, I'm reading, um, I'm reading um, all kinds of different things. One of them I remember was Immanuel Kant. And has anybody read Immanuel Kant? You want to hang yourself or not? <laughs> Try reading that uh, by yourself without any guidance at all. And he said, who's, who's guiding you through that? And I said, nobody. And he said, how's that going? And I went, not real good, <laughs> not, not, not real good. There are things that you do need some help on. You know, it would be nice, 
but you certainly don't need a fifty thousand uh, dollar a year guide through a lot of that and most of us don't need all of that stuff is there a problem with is, is there shame in being a blue collar worker no. is there shame in being a mechanic no. 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 is there a shame is anybody is there a job here that you won't take will you clean a toilet yes okay good are there people do you believe because let me tell you something. If we have to go to space and you're putting me in charge of the calculations, <laughs> you're burning up on the launch pad. <laughs> Guarantee it. Can't do, I'm not good at math, I'm not good at a lot of different things. I don't have the skills to be, so why do I need the same education that somebody wants to be an astronaut need? They don't. You want to be a physicist? Have at it. I don't. I don't need it. Why are we trying to put everybody into the same category? You must have this education. Why can't we have a, a, um, apprentice? Why can't you come? Somebody, you, you want to you do television and radio? Yes. You come work for me. Why can't? I've do, done it here with John. John worked at, um, uh, or he was going to Columbia? Yeah, I went to Columbia, uh, and I've interned for you for two years now. Um, but at Columbia, a lot of what I learned was really what we were saying earlier, is just how to kind of memorize something, how to regurgitate, regurgitate what we, the professor's notes from the class the next day on an exam. Um, but they really don't teach you how to think critically or how to think independently. Um, and frankly, I don't really think they want you to think critically or independently. John, uh, was, John was a superstar. I don't know, have any idea how he did in school. Superstar for me. I hired him. Uh, Nicole, superstar, you, NYU. <laughs> superstar. Love to have her. Raj, I have no idea what his <laughs> education is. I didn't even ask you if you graduated from college, did I? Done. You're smart. Great. Succeed. You start finding people that think like that, and you start gathering people, and you guys who are the entrepreneurs, you be those people. You teach. You have a responsibility to teach. You don't need all of the... America was founded against the guilds. We don't have gatekeepers here. You do it yourself. Back in a second. <laughs> Welcome back to the uh, program, America. I'm with a bunch of uh, uh, Americans that have either are they still in college or just getting out of college or have just gotten out of college and um, are wondering, uh, what the heck is happening now? What do I do now? Um, we've been talking a little bit about um, what are you waiting for and how you feel about the system. Um, Marco was telling me about going to uh, college during the commercial break and um, feeling like uh, you're not exactly being told the truth. Right. Uh, I. Uh, back in uh, 08, I was working in the Giuliani presidential campaign, and uh, we were trying to start a uh, political club on campus because there was no political club. And, uh, you know, we decided to open the John Jay College Republican Club. But the moment we said, you know, it's the Republican Club, all of a sudden, you know, everything changed. So we were told that, you know, oh, it's illegal because it's public school. But then again, there was other schools like BMCC, which is also a community school that had a Republican club on campus. And then as far as in our school, they said we need a Democratic club president in order to have a Republican club. And then, um, well, our discussion was, well, you have a Christian club and not a Muslim club. You have a fiction club and not a non-fiction club. So, like, where does stand? So the only way we got it happen, made it happen, was pretty much uh, we told them Fox News heard about this. And, it, you know, it was during the election, so it's a hot subject. <laughs> so we said they're Fox gonna, News heard about it? Right, and we said yeah. they want to make a story on it. So within five minutes, we received a phone call that all of a sudden it right. was a misunderstanding. So what did, that t what did that teach you besides to maybe exaggerate the truth a little bit. <laughs> what did that teach you? Well, uh, well, one of the lessons was don't give up, you know. If you think you could do it, just don't give up. Keep doing what you believe, because if, if you really believe in it, it's going to happen. So. See, I contend that life experience is worth far more than, uh, uh, than what you're putting in college. You were, you were saying a, a few minutes ago that you are an accountant, right? Yes. And you, uh, tell, we'll tell your story. So I was a professional accountant before going to college. And because I wanted to become a licensed CPA, I had to go get a master's. 
and basically I learned more during my time at, as working as an apprentice than actually learning anything in college. I was more professional before I went to college. Vanessa. Um, what was it? I'm just finished up my senior year of college and trying to find an internship was impossible. For even an internship, they asked for at least a year's worth of work experience. Can I tell you something? I, we didn't have uh, an internship program um, in my business because uh, five years ago, I couldn't get anybody to work. I mean, I'm not kidding you. People would come. I would have given my left arm to work in a national radio program or television program just to be able to see how it worked. I would have given my left arm. People wouldn't even show up for work. Now, things have changed. Um, you know, people are, I mean, we're, we're greatly blessed to have great interns. But um, keep looking. And, and I challenge, may I challenge the um, um, companies of America. There is a, uh, a whole new generation of success coming your way. Um, we're trying to institute a policy in my company that I'll hire the, uh, the very top of the interns and I hire them in. It's a guarantee. We hire you into the, the, the company. Some companies will fire the, the bottom 30% of their company every year, get rid of the deadwood. I, I'd rather reverse that. I'd rather get the best of the best every year and hire them in. Why aren't you looking at interns? Yes. Well, the thing about internships is that the living standards have gone up so much, yet we, they, we don't get paid. It's we're working for free without compensation. Oh my goodness, isn't that so much worse than paying a hundred thousand dollars for an education? <laughs> but the thing is, so what are we supposed to do? We, we're living here in New York, right? And we're working for free, 40, 50 hours a week, to get nothing basically. Here's what. No. You're getting experience. Thank you. Who said that? Raise your hand. Who said that? Thank you, Jonathan. Say it again. You're getting experience. You're getting something I would have given my right arm for. What are you getting? from working as an, an, an intern for me? It's not, <laughs> it's not about um, learning in a textbook. It's not about gaining money in your bank account. I think, for me personally, I've learned responsibility tenfold. I've learned so much more than I could ever learn in a classroom. You, you're an, you were an intern. We hired you, Natasha. Yes. What, what, are you, what did you get? Nothing at first. Yeah, uh, uh, money wise. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's what I'm saying, money wise. No, no, Wrong person. No, um, I was saying um, is that I worked for as an intern for almost two years for you, um, and you thankfully hired me. Uh, but I also, you know, I was dealing with school, and I also had a job at the same time. But it was more valuable to me to come in every single day to Mercury to work for you. But in the, in the end, in the end, you don't owe me anything. <laughs> I do. <laughs> and I don't, no, you don't. No, you don't. You owe yourself now to do something with it. Um, Boston. Yeah, uh, the thing that I've, I've come to find as far as internships is it's the best opportunity to really apply, just like an apprenticeship. And most companies now, when you want to get hired, they require you to have both a college education and an apprenticeship through an internship. And, uh, you know, so you learn at school the principles and the memorization, and then you learn how to apply it in the internship. And that, uh, at least in any, anybody I've talked to about jobs or okay. job opportunities, it's, it's all about that. Let me tell you something. We're going to come back in a second. I want to introduce you to somebody who is 11 years old. And um, anybody who might be watching going, oh, yeah, well, I can't do it. Eleven. And already has decided, I'm going to change the world. And we'll meet him next. <laughs> All right. I want to introduce you uh, to somebody who flew a very long way. We flew him in f and his family from Alaska. And I was just in Alaska. It's far. <laughs> um, he is making a huge difference uh, getting involved. Um, his name is uh, Anthony Ursick. He's from Palmer, Alaska. He is here with his uh, parents, uh, Donna and Christopher. Anthony was inspired to bring unity to his community. He's 11 years old. Hello, Anthony. How are you, sir? Good. Good to meet you, sir. 
Nice to meet you, too. Um, uh, so, <clears throat> tell me what you did. Um, I inter... Well, two years from the inspiration, I went to my mom and asked, what can I do to help in my community? So, mom prayed about it, and God told her, do this. And... So we went around, interviewed all the churches, and then it moved on to ministries, community involved in public servants, which would be like the council members, mm -hmm. the mayor. I'm well aware of public, <laughs> public servants. <laughs> and so, and you brought everybody together for a. Seeing inspiration is what we like to call it. Mm -hmm. And how many, how many um, members did you have? How many people did you have show up? Uh, we, uh, 165. 165. Mom, how many people live in your town? 5,000. 5,000. Um, Dad, what, what did you think of all this? I thought it was ambitious at first. Yeah. But uh, they were persistent. They, what, what, did you, what do you do in Alaska? What, Donna, what do, you, what do you both do in Alaska? Well, I'm a homemaker and a homeschooler. Okay. And, Chris, what do you do? I travel throughout the state installing telecommunications equipment. Okay. That's a big state. <laughs> yeah. You guys are hoarding a lot of land up there. <laughs> it's all ours. Yeah, it's all ours. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. I wish we used some of it. Yes. Um, so, Anthony, what did you learn from this experience? A lot of stuff. Um, well, have you heard of behavioral issues? And I'm mm -hmm. sure you've heard of doctrinal issues, but mm -hmm. um, we uh, tried it. We, uh, we found out about the behavioral and doctrinal, and we decided to unite all the churches on the uh, behavioral, because on the doctrinal, everyone has it's something different. Right. And it's yeah. really, um, it's almost... Uh, it's almost what we're trying to do um, in Israel, where put your differences aside. There are things, the good, right and wrong, good versus evil, that we can unite on. The rest of it, we can argue about for the rest of our lives and all eternity, and we most likely will. Um, but, uh, but unite on that. Great job. Thanks for coming. You, uh, you're in uh, New York for a while. I know, <laughs> Chris, I know you, <laughs> I, Chris said to me, when we saw him in the green room, I said, how do you like New York? He said, there are a lot of people here. <laughs> Back in just a second. Let's go to John. Students uh, and uh, young Americans under 25. John. Given the current economic crisis, if you were a, if you were a freshman in college, what would you major in and why? Um, uh, farming. Farming is going to be extraordinarily important, and nobody wants to do it. Other than that, whatever I loved, and if I needed the education, and then I would interview the school, I wouldn't worry about if they were going to accept me. I'd worry if I was going to accept them. David. Uh, hey, Glenn. I just finished my freshman year at Cornell University, and I've been talking to a lot of people. They're, you know, they've worked their butt off all four years. They got a 4.0 GPA. Uh, they're doing all this stuff, but seemingly they can't find a job. You know, how long is this mess going to continue? It seems like people are doing everything perfectly right, just cannot get a break in this market. And it's yeah. stressing me out and a lot of other people. You're at the beginning of change, profound change. And if you don't capitalize on it, believe me, others will. <laughs> and the others that will are the ones that like gigantic government and don't believe in capitalism. Lindsay, what did you do when you couldn't find a job? Well, it was before we couldn't find a job. My, my boyfriend had graduated uh, college with a physical education degree, and he didn't want to teach, so he loved welding. So him and I, we both wanted to own our own business, so we decided to open a small welding company. And um, he, um, it, it, was, it was going well. Well, before it went well, we had to build it because we couldn't get a loan. We couldn't get a $4,000 loan for a, right. a used truck. So we worked at Walmart until we can afford to build our own rig. And as soon as we built our own rig, you listen, we, tell your friends, we set out. this is what you do. This is what you do. You move forward.
and you just keep moving forward. Keegan. Hi. Uh, my question, I think, is one that's on the tip of to the tip of uh, many college students' tongue. And it's very simple. It's, you know, what, what is the key to getting a job after graduation? I don't know. Who has that answer? Yeah? I would say the key is showing passion for, you know, having a passion about something. When I prepare for my radio shows in college, I meet with my buddies early, a couple hours beforehand, do research. We really love being on air and, you know, exposing things like you do, Glenn, about the government. So you really need to have passion. You need to find something you love. Passion and homework get you a long way. Sam, quickly. Yeah, Glenn, I think uh, integrity and hard work is very important coming out of school. I think a lot of college students graduate and they kind of think that this glorious job is waiting for them. Yeah. Uh, it's very important to keep in mind you've got to work hard. All right. Let me tell you this, too. Um, the number one thing that nobody focuses on, integrity. Honesty and integrity. If you can be somebody people can trust, you'll go a long, long way. Let me... Um, let me just say this, because he doesn't know yet, because I just got a phone call just a couple of minutes ago, and I've already told the audience here. I think this is the coolest story. If anybody is watching at home and you think you can't make it and you're 25, there's a guy named Joshua Charles. He's been on this program now twice. He's a guy who um, um, heard me say about two years ago that somebody should rewrite the Federalist Papers. Well, he did, and then he tried to get them to me, and he tried and tried and tried, and he couldn't get them to me. Uh, through a long story and long string of um, miracles, he got them to me. I said, if they're any good, we'll consider publishing them. Well, they were. We did. It's called the original argument. Joshua, in case we haven't called you yet, I plan on calling you in a few minutes. Congratulations. You're a number one New York Times bestseller. <laughs> Anything can be done in America. The original argument, available bookstores everywhere. Back in a minute. Tomorrow, we are going to uh, do a show on history. And I, I, I've lost my erasers or somebody has stolen them. I'm sure that's what it is. Uh, six shows left. Uh, tomorrow is, uh, or is that Friday? Is today Wednesday? Yeah. Oh, okay. Friday is going to be history. Tomorrow, I have no idea what it's going to be. Don't, it'll be really, really good. From New York, good night, America.